Hey, how's it going? And today we're going to be talking about levels, what they are and when and how you might use them. One of the ways you might use them is if you want to control the visibility of a group of objects. So you put them in another level and then you can toggle the visibility off or on in the sequencer. So here's an example of that right now that I have. So if I go to the beginning here, I've got three levels here. I've got a main level, which is the persistent level. I've got a cubes level and a VFX level. And if I hit play, so the cubes are going to be visible. That's their default state for the first two seconds. And then after two seconds, their visibility is going to go off. And I'm not in play mode right now. So I'll hit play. And you'll see the cubes go off. Now, the cool thing is, is that if I come up here and I hit play, it works in play too. So whether you're in play or out of play, this works. So I'll be back in just a minute. Okay, I'm back and I'm ready to get started. And the reason I'm doing this tutorial is that I've been doing some, looking into some Unreal projects that they have. Like I've been looking at the Slay project that they have that's available in the marketplace. And I was taking a look at the real-time compositing project that they have. And I noticed all those projects rely heavily on levels. And I assume that's because they have a lot of different people working on them. So the main reason you'd want to use levels is really is if you had a big project and you wanted to separate up the work so you can think of levels like layers in photoshop and so let's say i was working on a big project and i had one guy working on animation and someone else working on modeling and another person working on the environment and another person working on the player character and somebody else doing vfx i might want to assign all those artists or individuals their own levels to work on and then i would create a master level and bring all those sub levels in to compile it kind of put everything together but if you're a solo artist you probably don't have that much of a need to do that what you might use a level for is let's say you had a group of actors or you had something that you're working on and for some reason you wanted to keep it separate from everything else or you wanted to toggle its visibility off or on for some reason to be completely honest with you when i work with levels sometimes i notice they can get a little glitchy so i'm not 100 percent sure about working in levels it's just something you should be aware of even if you don't use levels so so anyway, with all that said, let's just get started. So in the third person template, if I go into the maps level, you see I'm in the third person map right here. So let's say I wanted to create a project with a main level and then two sub levels inside of it. So what I would do is I'd have to create three levels. So I want to show you something too, is you got to come up to windows and there's a a category just for levels so you want to make sure that's enabled and then when it comes in dock it wherever you want to i just have mine docked over here but notice this on the third person template notice levels the levels feature is disabled when world partition is enabled so what that means is you can't use levels in this project so that's something to think about right there you can't even do levels if even if you wanted to so if you did want to work with levels what that means is you're going to have to be in persistent levels and world partition is not going to be an option for you so that's something to consider this also means that when you're working in the third person template that sometimes objects will unload or actors will unload because they're being loaded in and out on an as needed basis and sometimes that can be a big headache so generally speaking i like to work in persistent levels just so i don't have to deal with that to create a main level that's persistent where world partition is disabled we would come up here and go to file new level and i'll just get a basic level and i'll go create and save what we've done so far and you see it comes in as a persistent level and i don't get the world partition is enabled message i don't want this to be called untitled so i'm just going to go to file save current level as and i'm going to save it here with my other maps and levels and i'm just going to call this main level okay and here i am and i i could do whatever i wanted to do in here bring a mannequin in or whatever just whatever you wanted to do in this level but let's say i was working with somebody and they were developing some modeling some magical cubes or something but i didn't want them working in this level or let's say i wanted to have three magic cubes but i wanted them in their own level so that i can control their visibility i could toggle the visibility of them off or on so in that case i would create another level and come up here and go file new level and I could just make it an empty level and go create. And now it's a completely blank level. And then let's say they wanted to bring some cubes in. I could get some cubes and just drag them into the scene for cubes and drag one, drag two, and drag three. Now, one thing about working is in levels, especially if you've got 
physical objects in there, you probably want to position them at or near the origin. So what we do is select this cube, set it at the origin, select this cube, set it at the origin, and select that cube and set it at the origin. Now I might not want them all right on top of each other, so I might space them apart a little bit, but I would want them at the origin so that we're sharing the same world space because we're all in different levels. So I'd want to keep my work around the origin. So now this level, I would go save current level as, and I would just call this cubes level. And then I've created that. So now I've got two levels created, a main level and a cubes level. And let's say I had somebody else that was working on, or let's say I had a, v a visual effect that I wanted to keep in its own separate level. So I would go file new level, empty level, create, and now I'm in that untitled level. And that's, I'm not gonna put anything in here, but, but I'll just call this, let's say, save this as VFX and go save. So now I've got a main level and two sub levels. And so I go back on the levels tab, you'll see there are all three persistent levels. So now let me go back into the main level. And let's say I wanna make these two levels sub levels within my main level. All I have to do is select them and click and drag them over here like that. So now I've got my main level, which is the persistent level, and the cubes level and the VFX level. So let's say I wanted to make an adjustment here. I, I would just come over here and let's say I want to bring these up a little bit. I would just click and drag them up and that's that. And to verify that these are in fact in a separate level, these buttons here, I could toggle the visibility. So because this is in the cubes level, I click this button, they disappear. And so you can see they're, they're not in my persistent level. Like if I turn the persistent level off, my cubes are still there. If I go into unlit, you'll see the cubes are still there, but the persistent level is not there anymore. See that? You can almost think of it as layers in Photoshop. It's very, very similar to that idea. Remember, if World Partition is enabled, you don't even have it as an option. So now let's say we got a grasp on what levels are and how we can use them and turn them off or on their visibility. So let's do that. Let's ex let's play around with that. And I do have to be honest that I've had this glitch up on me. So I don't know how reliable a method this is to do. So one of the things that we're going to have to do is on the level, there's this option if you right click and says change streaming method, we wanna put it to always loaded. We do wanna do that, always loaded. And you don't even have that option on the persistent level. Okay, and then let's go ahead and save all. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna right click and we are going to go into cinematics and create a level sequence. We're gonna double click into it and then when you come over here to tracks, you'll see we've got a level visibility track. Okay, so now let's say, let's say I want to, the cubes to be visible initially, and then I want them to disappear. So if I wanted them to be visible initially, I would leave this on visible. If I wanted them to be hidden initially, I would set them as hidden here and then turn it on visibility over here. The toggle state for visible is gonna to be to switch it from visible to hidden. So I'm gonna start with it as visible, right? So what we do is go to track here, level visibility track, and I don't want it to be visible, I want it to be hidden because I'm already visible. So I actually need the hidden track and I don't need two tracks, so I just need the hidden track. So I've got that selected. Then all I have to do is get, click the cubes level and just drag it onto the hidden track here. And you'll notice it's hidden, it went away, right? But let's say I said I wanted it to be for like two seconds. I can switch this to show time. I can just click and drag this now to the two second mark. So now the cubes are gonna start out as visible, which is their default state. And at the two second mark, they're going to become hidden. So let's see if that works without glitching up. So we'll try it on in-game play and not in-game play. So not in-game play, I'll go to the front here and I'll hit play. Remember, it's gonna be visible for the first two seconds and then hidden. So let's hit play and see if they disappear in two seconds. Yeah, seems to work. 
Okay, now to have this happen in the play mode, I'm just going to come over here to the content browser. I'm going to drag the sequencer into the scene, go to the details panel. We're going to set it to auto play. And then it's a good practice. It is a good practice just to turn off the sequencer, click it off of it so it's not interfering with anything else. So now what should happen is when I hit play, we'll see the cubes for three seconds, two seconds, and then they'll go hidden. So hit play and see if that's what happens. Yep. So that's levels and how you might be able to use them. I hope you found this of some help. Take care.